you, those of you who don't like baseball will have to forgive me and can use this time to sleep, to rest. <laughs> I also have to tell you that I have brought a little show and tell. special space of baseball is special indeed. What I call the back and forth sports, soccer, football, basketball, ice hockey, etc., are played in, a rectang in rectangular fields and constitute crass metaphors for a war between two nations that alternatively defend their territory or invade that of the enemy to attain victory. If a Martian landed on, in his spacecraft and were taken to a soccer game, he could be easily made to understand what is taking place on the field. But try to explain baseball to someone who grew up in a country in which the game is not played. Words, gestures, and even diagrams are not enough. I've tried it with Chileans, for instance. <laughs> the, oddities, the oddities and arbitrariness of baseball are many. For instance, it is a game in which the defense holds the ball. Perhaps the reason for this peculiarity lies in the English origin of the sport, as the games from which it developed were played in, in garden-like fields set off for bucolic leisure during holidays. In such a refined, civilized atmosphere, the game had to be a sophisticated, contrived activity with the war in the original metaphor as distant as possible. Early baseball was a sort of minuet. Be that as it may, the baseball field, particularly the diamond, is quite arbitrary, self-generated and contained. It does not resemble a battlefield. And movement within it is not predominantly rectilinear towards an obvious goal, but circular. The baseball diamond has the shape of a partial mandala. It is a square, three quarters of which are enclosed within a, within a concentric circle. A mandala is a Hindu magical design that superimposes a square and a circle, a concord of contraries that seeks the unity of the three and the four and the ultimate harmony of the universe. In Cuba, this uneasy combination is thought to be replicated by the packaging of the ball in a box. <laughs> La pelota es redonda pero viene en una caja cuadrada. The ball is round, but it comes in a square box. The baseball playing area, moreover, is not symmetrical in the way soccer or football is, with matching ends where the respective goals are placed. Each of the four corners is unique. First base, though across the diamond for third, is quite different from it, even if it looks, it looks the same. First is the initial stop in the itinerary around the diamond. Outs can be made by the first baseman by touching the base while holding the ball. If the runner has not reached it from home, and he wears, the first baseman, a different sort of glove. Third is the next to last stop in the journey, and outs there are made by tagging, unless the other bases are occupied, in which case force outs are possible. The third baseman wears a regular glove and does not normally hold the runner. I know this is getting very complicated for those of you who don't like them. <laughs> second, second, which in, in the queue of the 20s, because it's in between, it was called La Adulterina. Second is the midway point up the trip of the trip around the bases. And outs there are made as a third and home by tagging, unless first is occupied and then stepping on the bag is sufficient, also as a force out. The base is covered by two players, the second baseman and the shortstop. To make baseball symmetrical and scrupulously impartial, left-handed batters would have to run to third instead of to first after hitting the ball. But this is not the case, putting right-handed batters at a disadvantage because they are farther from first than left-handed batters. 
Players always run the bases counterclockwise. In short, there is an enigma concealed in the baseball diamond to which is added the circle in the middle, uh, 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 in the middle of it where the pitcher stands, called a box, because originally it had a rectangular shape, but it is round. The special space of baseball bespeaks the particular activities that take place within it as a dance floor allows for the choreography of bodies responding to the melodies and rhythms of music. These activities, I'm trying to show the, the magical, atavistic uh, elements in baseball, and hence it's uh, belonging to a fiesta-like uh, uh, atmosphere. These activities have a link to literature and folklore. A runner leaves home played after striking the ball or reaching first by other means, and his goal is to return home, completing a journey in which he's threatened with being put out at every turn <laughs> and in, every, in a variety of ways. The runner's wanderings on his journey home are like those of folk, epic, and literary heroes such as Ulysses <laughs> and are fraught with obstacles and dangers. So in spite of its modernity, the core of the baseball game, beyond the elemental metaphor of war, involves a protagonist's effort to go back home, itself an atavistic desire that can be linked in psychological terms to a return to the womb, <laughs> but also a tomb. The run around the bases is a flight from threats to find comfort in the matrix, familiar, sheltering, and providing the kind of closure inherent in roundness. It is a flight from life as strife to a prenatal sanctuary of uh, to the prenatal sanctuary of the dog out, a home beyond home. It seems to me that this deep element is not present in other sports. And it ultimately accounts for the game's popularity as, and for its link to the motherland when appropriated by nationalist ideologists. Achieving the return home scoring calls for much celebration, not just because a run has been uh, added to the team's tally, but because of these not so hidden components of the game. Reaching home calls for a fiesta. There are other magic festive elements in the game, most of them pertaining to the baseball itself, the object thrown and hit by the players. Its roundness suggests self-containment, circularity, a motion that returns to its starting point which in turn is reflected by the run around the bases. It is, as you can see, round. Uh, if cut open, the ball reveals that it is a spool of twine wrapped around a rubber center. As kids, we would make a ball by wrapping the rubber ball from a game of jacks with string. As such, it denotes beginnings that are essentially nothing, but lead to something when repeated as when the twine is made to go around and around in circles seemingly forever. Nothingness and infinity are cloaked inside the, belt, the ball and are also figure on its outside. Indeed, the stitching of the ball, the red seam holding the cover tightly on it, is like a Moebius strip in its sinuous course around the ball, suggesting a continuity that is not just circular, but made up of interlocking circles. The seam's shape intimates infinite space through contained yet continuous motion. The ball is made to fit the hand. And I suspect that it initially imitated, imitated fruits and vegetables of that size. In the ancestral games of baseball that were played in the United States, uh, uh, in England and the United States, a baseball is about the size of an orange, a potato, or an apple. It is, in short, an, like an artificial fruit or vegetable made of rubber, twine, and leather, at first horsehide, but now cowhide. The baseball is made for the human hand. This is not the case with the basketball, the football, or the soccer ball.